Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, I will be doing an unboxing and a first look at the Bear Grylls Compact Fixed Blade Knife. This knife is being marketed as a compact and indestructible knife that is a full tang, technically it's a full length tang, and it's uh, supposed to be smaller and sort of a bare bone survival knife that can stay sort of close at hand. It has the same durable rubber handle that all the other Bear Grylls knives have, which are they are very comfortable and they are pretty ergonomic. So, just wanted to give you a quick look at the packing material here. And you can see it has a plastic sheet that comes with it and also you get the survival guide right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up real quick. Also there is a lifetime warranty and it is also made by Fisker or owned Gerber's owned by Fisker and most of their products are made in China. Opening up the packaging without a knife is a nightmare. So if this is your first knife <laughs> get scissors or something because trying to open it up by hand I just wanted to see um, how easy it would be just to open the packaging you are going to destroy the packaging don't matter so let's go ahead and take a close look at this here is the knife to give you a little tip protector when you first take it out of the package here is the priorities of survival guide for most of you folks are probably pretty familiar with this Many of you already collect all kinds of different Bear Grylls knives, and you probably don't have this one, this particular knife, because it's brand new. And just a quick look, I'm not going to really get into this, but it's, it's a fairly good guide. My only complaint is it's not waterproof, so if you get it wet, there it goes. On the other hand, it can make good tinder. <laughs> I'm sure it'll burn fine. Let's first take a close look at the knife. The first remarkable thing is this big old finger choil. Makes it pretty comfortable to hold. And if you want to get some extension, you could sort of get back here, although the handle is very short. So it's a, a very unique design. I don't think I've ever seen a knife like this. You have some fairly functional jimping up here. It's smoothed a little bit so it doesn't tear up your thumb, but you can see it is holding my thumb with a, with some pressure which is what jimping is supposed to do but with that finger choil and the jimping I think it's pretty secure in your hand and here we'll we'll test this okay so it's not slipping in my hand so pretty good now the blade really is a rather unique design although it's not listed anywhere on the website I did see one or two sites that sell this knife call it a drop point but it is a little bit unique I'd call it a modified drop point you can see it's partially serrated just like every single Bear Grylls knife um, all I got to say about the serrations is Gerber please give us the option of whether or not we want serrations on our knives or not. Please. Pretty please. <laughs> so anyway, you're looking at a 3.4 inch blade. And you can see it's coated to uh, help with corrosion resistance. Overall length of this knife is a rather short 7.8 inches. Also it's pretty light at about 3.77 ounces. And of course it's made in China. So it's also advertised as being a full tang. Now full tang means that you would be able to see the knife here in the handle. An example of full tang would be like the Skerber profile and you can see that all the way. But it does come all the way back here so most folks will probably call this a full length tang would be more technically correct. Now these handles on the Bear Grill knives, let me tell you, they are very ergonomic. They feel very good, very comfortable, and you, you know, in a wet environment, 
you'd still be able to hold on to this pretty good. Let's talk about the sheath real quick. It's plastic. That's what they advertise it as. Now, you can switch this to be up or down carry. So you can sort of put it in this way. So you can sort of have it where it you pull it out. So that's pretty nice. I'll tr try it out, see how good that works. Let's see how the retention is on the blade. Go ahead and, <laughs> and he puts it in upside down. Go ahead and put it in. Now this looks like what sort of locks it in. You got a little plastic piece right in there that sort of gets caught behind the finger choil. Go ahead and pop it in. We could actually watch that move up and back down. Pretty good. The clip does rattle a little bit, but it's very tight. Okay, they good. They put a drain hole on the bottom of the sheath also. Pretty nice. So how does this compare with the other Bear Grylls knives? Because I really want to tell you, this thing is very, very small. So let's go ahead and sort of compare it to some of the other knives. Here's the ultimate fixed blade Bear Grylls knife and you can see how that really makes this guy look really small which it is. Here's the folding sheath knife and it's even smaller than the folding sheath knife. Pretty incredible how small this is. Then we also have the folding uh, scout knife and it really comes in just a hair bigger than the folding scout knife but the blade is quite a bit bigger there also and you really get a lot of reach there not not a whole lot bigger but bigger and the only thing that um that really makes this look big is the <laughs> the compact scout knife which really is a piece of garbage to be honest so there's how it compares to all the other Bear Grylls knives. Now one thing I failed to tell you is that the blade material is 7CR17MOV, which is Chinese steel, comparable with 440A. Basically, if Gerber doesn't tell you what the steel is, that's what it is. But uh, they actually started putting it on the packaging, and it does say it's 7CR17MOV, so it's nice that Gerber is letting us know what steel it is. Let's go ahead and do a paper test. A paper cut test. And you can see it did a nice slow cut there. And it, it is tearing a little bit, so there we go. There we go. So it's pretty sharp. Let's go ahead and test these serrations that Gerber just loves to put on their knives. I got some 550 cord. You can see it cuts it. Is it easier to cut than with the plain edge portion of this? Probably a little bit. We'll go ahead. See? You could cut <laughs> this with the plain edge. I'm sure a thicker rope the serrations come in handy. Also you could always cut like this. Works like that too. Alright. It's passing all the tests. Let's go ahead and make sure that this thing is strong. The tip. Go ahead and... I'm not going to like totally abuse this knife, but I want to make it sure it could stand up, stand up to a little bit of, of light work here and make sure the tip doesn't break. And you can see the tip is all there. Let's go ahead and make sure it can cut some wood. Okay, so it does cut wood. Not all knives should. 
Let's make sure it can still cut paper after it. I doubt it. No knife should get dull that quick. Okay, it doesn't appear to be any different than it was before. <laughs> this is in desperate need of some sharpening out of the box, to be honest. Pretty good knife. I'd like to also point out that you do get a lanyard hole. I could go ahead and feed some 550 cord through here easily. Maybe not. <laughs> you know why it's doing that? Because the uh, metal inside is slightly smaller than the hole in the plastic part. So it's a little tricky, and oops, I just took out all the inerts on there, but you can get it through. I got it can get through. You just make sure that you burn the edge just a little bit on this, and you'll be able to feed it through. Um, you also here on the back you have something that can be used as an impact tool or glass breaker. Just make sure you're choking up there so you don't bust your hand. But there's really not a lot of room to really do too much with that since this is very very short maybe in a defensive role it could come in handy and speaking of defensive role let's go ahead and check the reverse grip on this well the pinky does lock into that choil and do have a good grip on it however this <laughs> thumb is not comfortable. Really, the only bare grills that feels comfortable in a reverse grip is the scout knife. You see how it has that curve in this direction? That feels good. I actually f feel like this cannot back back up in my hand. This, if I were to hit really hard, it'd probably hit here. But this is a survival knife, not a tactical knife, and I don't think. Yeah, there's no problem. This is so rubbery um, and grippy that I think even in a wet environment, you're not going to um, slip if you're holding it properly. Pretty thick stock, but still rather lightweight. Really nice knife. This uh, I'm pretty happy with this knife. Very compact, easy to carry. Let's see how it carries. Actually, you hardly even know it's there. I mean, I have to sort of crunch over here to feel it. It's uh, really nice and uh, comes out quickly. Goes in a little bit slower. Let's see. Um, <laughs> comes out pretty quick. Gotta remember to put it in the right way. I think I did. There we go. So, not bad. Let's see how it goes on uh, upside down. You can see that it will not come off your belt unless you pull this because how this is uh, right in here that'll sort of keep it from coming off your belt. Now I'm going to go ahead and reverse this and you can see how it is upside down. So you can just sort of pull it out like that. Pretty good. Just be careful when you're putting this thing back in though. Now if you want to carry it on the left side, you can't move the clip on the other side of the sheet, so you'll have to wear it with the sheet sort of inside your belt. So, not bad. It still works good. If you, if you have love handles like this, you're going to have to push them in a little bit further to get the blade in there. But, um, still works good. Actually, it's tighter to your side. So, not bad. Well, even though I like the sheath, keep in mind that the clip is plastic and its retention is not too great, so it's a good thing it has that little hook in there to hook the bottom of your belt. But if you have a belt that's thicker than that, then you're going to have a problem with this sheath. So, I mean, Gerber just doesn't come out with really good sheaths. However, the one on the that ultimate um, survival knife actually is a good sheath. So, it is kind of 
plasticky. Everything's plastic on here. Um, but what do you expect for the price? You got to remember to have bare grills put on this knife. It they automatically will charge you ten, five to ten dollars more than what it's really worth just to get it. But um, for those of us who like to collect bear grills, I'm sure we would have no problem spending that extra money. So how much did I pay for this? Well, where I bought it, it was $39, and that was at Dick's Sporting Goods. However, I remember the week before seeing it at Walmart for the unbelievable low price of $29.99. So I went ahead and brought in the um, a copy of the price on you know that I got off the website off of Walmart's website and I when I went into Dick's to buy this I uh, showed it because I was curious to see if they would price match and they did so not only did they give it to me for the price that it was in Walmart but they thanked me for shopping there so I do appreciate it um, however it'd be nice if you start out with some lower prices Dick's Sporty Goods tends to be a little bit higher than most out there but some people say why don't you just get it at Walmart well, Walmart already gets enough of my money, number one, and number two, they didn't have any more, so I had to get it in a dick, no matter what. So, there it is. Do I recommend it? Yes, for $30. Absolutely. This is a, a good deal. The, the sheath, as much as I love the design, I wish the clip was a little bit sturdier. It sort of rattles in there a little bit, and uh, I'm not sure how well it will stand up in the long run it seems to be the weakest point of this whole knife the knife itself is rock solid but this this clip on the sheath is, is a little shaky but it, it seemed to do good in a safe environment here at the gear obsession compound Fred here welcome back to the gear obsession channel in this episode you're gonna listen to my chair creak Ooh. 